Good evening. It's good to be in the Lord's house this evening. Uh, we're going to do the Bible verses this evening, see if any of them's got one. God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believing in him should not perish as ever in life. John 3, 16. Proverbs 3, 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. But God commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Anyone else got one? John three sixteen. What? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Keep pushing them. You won't regret it.
what the children do with skinned up knees and tennis shoes. You may think we're not worth a lot, but being loved by God's own son makes us as big as anyone. Because we don't look big as it mean we're not. Cause little people, we got a lot and we're gonna let it shine. And we're God's little people. God's little people are God's sometimes David was a kid and a sling in his hand Oh, that was a big, big man He said, David, I'll kill you with my sword Being brought him down the side With that rock between his eyes Christ, the name in the name of the Lord Cause we're God's little people We got a lot and we're gonna let it shine And we're God's little people God's little people, God's big people sometimes See Jesus passing through. He put down the glass to say, to no bark on that tree today. He said, I'm coming in with you. Lord, we'd like to give our best to you, but there's a lot of things that we can do. Tall and we're not strong, but for small people everywhere, we got something for the world to hear. And Lord, we like to sing to you this song. Cause we're God's little people. We got a lot of we're gonna let it shine. God's little people are God's big people sometimes.
Amen. Don't these kids bless your heart? Amen. Talking about being little there and God using you. Sometimes that's the only prayers God hears, I believe. You say, well, you mean by that? And I'll say this. Sometimes their, their prayers are the purest. They know how to keep it simple. You and I muck it up sometimes. And sometimes we let iniquity regard in our hearts. And sometimes we let things stand in the way. I'm telling you, Brother Vernon, them little prayers go out. I've heard them before, Sister Natalie. Them little prayers go out and say, Lord, remember my mom or daddy, or remember my uncle, or remember my pastor. Just something simple. They're pure. You won't tell me God won't use a little person. God used little people all through the Bible. Amen. Mentioned David in there. David was just a ruddy lad, but I'm telling you what, used David. I, I'm telling you, God used every little one in the Bible, just like He used, can use every one of you today and if you'll just be diligent to him I told him I asked him anything I said if you're scared at school ask Jesus for help I said if you'll ask him for help I said peace will come like you've never had before don't ask for brother Wayne to give you peace don't ask for the teachers to give you peace ask for the father to give you peace and he'll give you peace that passes all understanding I'm glad of that tonight I'm probably uh, the least worthy night to stand here and preach hey, I know there's some preachers here it's come visiting tonight Brother Keith's sitting here with us. I, I've uh, had to work this morning, but I'm glad to have the opportunity to be here tonight and uh, be able to read the Word of God and give you what God gave to me, what He's helped me with and helped me through the last uh, little bit. But if you have your Bibles and turn with us, turn to the book of Zephaniah. That's in the middle of your Bibles. That's where your pages are all crusted together. I'll give you a minute to get there. Zephaniah chapter number 3. Zephaniah chapter number 3, if you'll turn your Bibles there, and when you get there, stand in reverence of reading God's Word. We'll get there and do what God have us to do. I'll be real short. You pray real hard. I preach real fast, and we'll get out of the way, and everybody be happy. And uh, I'll do what God have me to do. But I got to thinking about this this week, and you've probably heard me preach a similar message before. But uh, God just showed me this, and I was reading an Old Testament. I love Old Testament reading. It helps me. It helps me grow. And I uh, got over here and got to reading in the book of Zephaniah down around verse number 17. I see you standing in reverence reading God's word. I'll go ahead and read it. It said in verse number 17, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. Amen. I'm glad that he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight by our heads, God. One more time this side of eternity, Lord, I ask you just forgive me for where I failed you and come short, Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask you just hide me behind your cross tonight. God, use me as a mouthpiece, Lord. Heavenly Father, I'd deliver your message. God, I'd preach what you'd have me to preach, not anything of myself, but just the old blessed book, Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for what you've done for me, for saving my soul. Give me a, a firm foundation, establish my goings, and I ask you just help the Lord tonight. If some lost souls here, Lord, they can find you, Lord. Heavenly Father, and you'd find them, and you'd meet them in an old-fashioned altar and save her soul. For it's eternally too late. God, I ask you to be with these, Lord, tonight. May be struggling, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the internet. God, that may be sitting watching us from home. Heavenly Father, reach down, comfort their hearts. Pick them up on wings of love, Lord. Heavenly Father, and just lift them up throughout the remainder of this week. Help them with the messages, Lord. Lead God and direct everything that's said and done. Guard my lips and guide my tongue. I'd never be a stumbling block or a hindrance, Lord, for it's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I got to reading this and got to thinking about the Lord thy God. I got over here. I've read a lot of scripture, and when you get to reading some scripture, it's just something sticks out to you sometimes. I, I, I preached on it, and I've, uh, I've, talked, I've been accused of stealing Bibles, and I've been accused of preaching on some one word. I'll tell you what, I'll preach on one word tonight, and yeah, I can laugh about that too. I can laugh about uh, stealing Bibles. Hey, it stuck. Something happened, didn't it? Hey, man, I'm glad. I still get nasty looks at that. On that, Sister Natalie, Jake mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. She said she remembers that, but I'm telling you, God's Word means something to me when I read it. When he said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. I got to thinking in the midst of me. Got to thinking in the midst of mankind. When I got to thinking about in the midst, I looked up what the midst mean. When you think about the midst, you think, well, it's, it's kind of around us. No, if you look at the word in the a, in, in a, in a dictionary and you pull it up, in the midst of means in the center. In the center, in the middle of. And it says in there, it says, The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee. 
is mighty. I'm telling you, if we've got God inside of us, we can be mighty through Him. We can be mighty. We can be mighty in the Word. We can be mighty in prayer. We can be mighty in service, Lord Jesus Christ. But if He's not in the center, if we've got Him on the outskirts, then we're not, he, He's not going to use us like He'd use us if He's in the center. God said He wants to be in the center of our hearts and life. He wants to be number one in your life. He said, in the midst of thee, I am. He said, in the midst of thee, is, he is, the Lord is mighty. And He will be mighty through us if we keep Him in the center. Now you look at that word midst, and the word midst, if I'm not mistaken, I tried to look it up, tried to study it, mentioned some 350 different times in the Bible. I believe about 306 times in the Old Testament. The rest of them's found in the New Testament. But if you go over in the book of, the, uh, of Genesis, the Bible talks about being in the midst of the garden, uh, the tree of life and knowledge is in the midst of the garden. And when you look up that, it means in the center of it. I'm glad that God's in the center and in the midst of it in the beginning, ain't you? I'm glad he was in the center. It says he, the, the, the tree of life and knowledge was in the middle of the garden, in the midst. You go look it up. It says in the midst. And look up what midst means. It says he's in the middle of it. God's in the middle of the garden when we start growing. Now you think about that. You think about that real close. If we've not got God right in the center of our heart, right in the middle of our garden, right in the middle of the babe of our life, how are we going to grow? How are we going to prosper in God's Word? How are we going to study if God's not right here? Right. Some people say, well, I just can't comprehend the Bible. Let me tell you something, friend, I'm not being mean. I'm not being ugly, but maybe you've not got God right in the center. Right. Maybe He's on the outskirts on your hand. Maybe He's in the top of your head. People say there's head knowledge and there's heart knowledge. Is that not what we've heard? We've heard preach. We've heard teach. When we've got God right in the middle of our life, we can understand His Word. When we start with God in the center, He'll take and be with us no matter where we go. It doesn't matter. We can grow as long as God's in the center. If God's not in the center, then we're not going to grow. Boy, it gets kind of quiet. If God's not in the center of our hearts and lives every day, we will not grow as a Christian. We will not grow as a church. We will not grow as a community. We will not grow as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ out in this community that we live in. How will they ever see it if it's not in the center of our life? The Bible says from the abundance of what? The heart, the mouth speaketh. If we don't go out into the community and God come out of the center of our heart and our mouth, then why would they want to come to the house of God? I'm telling you, Him being in the midst, in the center of us, that's where we learn to grow. In the beginning of Genesis, He talked about being in the midst, talking about the tree. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. I'm glad that when He's in the center of me, I'm strong. You put Him out on the outskirts, you get a little weak. Uh, just scoot that word a little bit farther away from you and you walk a little farther away from the word, watch how weak you get throughout the week. Watch how weak you get throughout, uh, watch how weak you get throughout the month. Push that word a little farther and get it out on the outskirts. I've seen these preachers. I, I remember Brother James Blayton and old Dean McNeese when they come in. Some of these men of God that I've studied and walked behind. And Brother Cal Ray Evans, Brother Mike Blanton, Brother Mike McCoy. Every time you see them, They'll come in the house of God or you'll see them out in public. I'm telling you, it's the truth of my right hand raised. I mean it when I see them. They've got that word of God right there in the front of their heart. And that's what's on their heart and mind. Not only physically, not only spiritually, but literally. We've got to keep God right in the center. Because if we don't keep him in the center, everything else is going to die. Hey, everything else is going to die. That's where the strength is. Is in the center. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. We feast off of him, not off anything else. We feast off the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he's in the center of our life, he's in the garden. He's in the midst. He was in the center. He he's, he's, has to be in the center in order to grow. Secondly, he'll be in the fire in the center. Amen. I know you've heard this story. I mean, I was thinking about that. You go over in the book of Daniel, look how many times the midst is mentioned over there. Did we, did we not throw three men into the what? Into the midst of the fire. Is there not a fourth man walking in the midst 
of the fire. Boy, I can about get a glory bump right there. I'm glad to know that when I'm in the fire, Brother Donnie, he's right in the middle of it. He's not out on the outskirts. He's not standing at the door. He's not standing at the back of the furnace. He's right in the middle to hold on to it, to quench those fiery darts, to take and burn off those ropes. And the only way he can do it is being right in the middle of it. Because he's in control of the fire. He's in control of the storm. He's in control of the things at Walmart, Brother Eric. I don't care whether you're driving. I don't care whether you're working. He's in control and right in the middle if you want him to be. He's in control of our life in the house of God if we want him to be. You think about that and I look at it. I tried to think about it when I come in here and I wish I'd had me measuring tape to stretch it. But I'd love to. I look up there and I try and go from that wall to right there. But I can come and stand just about where Margaret's at. I'm trying to judge a distance about right here, right in the middle. Well, wouldn't you like to know that God's right in the center, right in the center of the house of God, right in the center of the house of God, right in the middle of the storm, right in the middle of the fiery furnace, right in the middle of our garden where we need to grow. God's got to be right in the center of that thing. He told the Hebrew children, he was in the midst of the fiery furnace. He would be there in the midst of the fiery furnace. What did he say? He said, behold, I look in and see a fourth man walking in the midst. Right in the middle. Yeah. Is he there in the middle of your fire? Is he there in the middle of your life? Is he there in the middle of your storms? In the middle of the storms when they're all brashing around you and waves are tossing to and fro? Is Christ not right in the middle? And we're the ones that walks out of the boat. Anybody else walk out of the boat and start to sink that we've ever read about? Walked out of the boat, got out there and got to sinking. But I'm telling you, when he got a hold of the middle, the Lord Jesus Christ, everything was all right. right. We've got to know that we've got to have Christ right in the middle of our hearts and lives. We've got to know that we cannot grow, we cannot fight the fire. I say this to say that one time I set the woods on fire. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. Oh, laugh at me, Krista. I'll whoop you and cut your tars after church. I'm telling you, set a fire one time, didn't mean two. Woods caught on fire. And I remember being up there and I had a rake, Brother Danny. My old brother-in-law had a rake and we was fighting that fire. Look around us. And he was going that way and I was going this way. And we'd look and there'd be fire in between us. And there'd be fire circle around about us. I said, I come back and I told him, I said, I don't know what to do. He said, we're just going to have to fight together and stay after it in the center. And I thought, well, why in the world would you stay at it in the center? I've got to fight. It's going that way. It's going that way. But little did I know every time I chased it or I didn't have an extra rake with me or I didn't have a little help. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't have a little help. Oh, yes. And I ventured out of the center of that fire. It start consuming me and circling around me. Yeah. I'm talking about physical fire. When I got out there, Brother Ricky, and I got, I'd turn around and I'd look, and there'd be fire behind me, there'd be fire in front of me, be fire on the right of me. And I'd look around, there'd be fire on the left of me. I'd be consumed by fire. Yeah. When I stayed in the middle of my help, he had my back. We need to keep going this way, we need to keep going that way, we need to work together. Yeah. You think that what ain't that what the Lord Jesus Christ does? Yeah. He comes over and says, Donnie, hey, uh-huh. we need to go this way, right. but we need to go together. Don, if you go that way, we're going to struggle. Mm-hmm. But I need you to listen to me, son. I'm right in the center. I'm the anchor. Mm-hmm. I'm the hold point. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I'm right in the center of your life. Yeah. Listen to me, and we'll make, we'll make progress. I promise you, I'll make you prosperous. I'm not going to make you back pocket thick. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about them blessings, sister. He's going to make you prosperous in the blessing. He's going to keep you out of the fire, or he's going to burn the bonds off of you and set you free as long as he's in the middle. If he's not in the middle, you watch yourself get consumed in the midst. Go over and look and see how many times in Daniel he mentions the midst in about four or five verses talking about being in the center of him. When them old three Hebrew boys prayed, they said, let it be so. It doesn't matter. If, and this is a brand of paraphrase. And I'll mess it up if I go to quote the scripture. If God don't take care of us and so be it, we're going to pray anyway and we're going we're gonna to love the Lord anyway. Cast all you want. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, God, he looked down and said, I'll, I'll be with you. I'm going to take care of you. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. I'm glad to know that he walks with me through the fire. 
I'm glad to know he walks with me through the storm. I'm glad to know that he walks with me through the valleys of the shadow of death where I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. I'm glad to know, I'm glad to know that when I'm next to the shepherd, I'm next to protection, ain't you? I'm glad to know that when I'm in the center with him, Brother Danny, he's taking care of me. But when I venture out, oh, didn't he call us all what? All you're like what? Sheep and have gone astray. And when you wander off sometimes, I got to smack you around, break your leg and bring you back. You say, well, God ain't going to do that. Oh, yeah, he will too. Yeah, he will too. You venture out there too far to the bluff line, watch to see if he don't take that shepherd's staff and stag you right in the neck, get your attention, bring you right back to the center where it's safe. The Bible says over in the book of Luke, it said he's with his disciples and he's in the midst of his disciples. And his disciples is in this man. He'd just been blessed or had just blessed bread or broke bread and blessed it. And they said, Master, what should we do? And he's standing in the midst of them and he said, Peace unto you. Peace. You'll only find peace in the center. You'll only find peace in the center. Come on, you cooks, help me out sometime. You take that old beater, pull it up there, and start circling that thing or one of them big ones that you drop down. It's always calm in the center, ain't it? Because yous are beating the life out of it on the outside edges. But it's peaceful in the center. I think about that. I think about things like that when God speaks to me that it's peaceful in the center. When he was talking to his disciples, it said over in, I believe it's the book of Luke 24, I believe it is, I think, or Luke 22. I'm not real sure you have to quote me or follow up on me on that one, but he said he was talking to him and he was in the midst of him and said, Peace, settle down. Settle down. Peace be unto you. Where you find peace, you find peace in the center of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the midst, in the center. In the midst means in the middle. That's where you'll find your peace. Not, not only will you find it in the garden in the beginning when you need to grow, not only will you find it in your fire and in your storms, that he walked with three Hebrew children, not only when there's just trouble in the camp. I don't suppose any of you has ever had trouble in the camp, have you? Come on. Boy, it gets quiet right there. There is trouble in camps. There is trouble in your homes. I'm going to see if I can get something back here, Eric. There's trouble in your homes. There's trouble in your camps. There is trouble sometimes in the church. Amen, preacher. But if we'll get in the center and listen to that still small voice. When we get in the center, we're not worried about all the jabbers outside or we're not worried about all the things that's going on around us. We get in the center right there in the middle. Amen. Right in the middle. And he'll say, be calm, son. Be still, son. Know that I'm God and I've got it. I don't need your help. I don't need you going out running your mouth. I don't need you going doing nothing. I know right where you're at. That's good. I know right where the church is at. Uh-uh. I know right where your family's at. I know right where your finances are at. Yeah. Did he fix anybody's finances in the Bible? Huh? Yeah. I, they sung about one there, said, about Zacchaeus, right? Yeah. Then told him he'd go back and what Zacchaeus do? I believe when he went back and he had the Lord, he was just like giving it away. You know, give it out to everybody now. He's just happy. Yeah. Give it to everybody. He can be in the center of your finances. Right. Right. He can be in the center of the church. He can be in the center of the camp. He can be in the center of the home. But you have to invite him there to stay. You have to invite him in to stay. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock to any man that will let me in. I'm telling you, he wants to be right here in every one of us. And not only is he in the center of our life today, not only is he in the center of our life tonight, right here in Calvary Baptist Church, but you know what? I thought about this, and Brother Donnie mentioned him coming back. He's right in the center of Tim Tony's truck. Yeah. How's he right here and right in the center? Boy, I'm glad we got a big God, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I'm glad he can be right in the center of Calvary Baptist Church. I'm glad he can be at Mount Vernal. I'm glad he can be saving souls. I'm glad he can be reaching out and blessing houses of God all over the country, all over our community, and be right where I'm at. Yeah. 
be right where I'm at. When I'm at Y12 on Sunday morning, thank you. Lord, what's my church doing? You just help them, give them strength, then come by and somebody say, Preacher, it's Sunday. We come out and leave some prayer. I'm like, well, glory. All right. I'll do it, Lord. I'm telling you, he can be in the center of our lives, wherever we're at, if we'll just invite him in. He's that big a God. He's that big a God to take care of the garden. He's that big a God to, a God to take care of a fire. He's that big of a God to take care of a storm. And I'll tell you where else he's that big. Now hush and sit down. He's that big to finish it, right? Right. The Bible says in Revelation chapter number 22, if you want to read over there, he said in the midst of the river of life, there is a tree that bears 12 minutes of fruit. In the midst, in the midst. Who do you think that is? What do you think that is in the midst of the river of life? It's my Savior anchored and holding us till we get to the end. In the midst of all the things that are going on in our life, in the midst of end times, whether you like it or not, God's going to destroy this thing. Can I get a witness right there? He's going to wipe this thing out. All trouble and trial is going to leave, but he's going to be standing up one day, and he's going to be wiping his hand, kicking volleyballs out through the field because they're evil and it's the devil, and we're all going to be sitting in the center of the river of life while God's taking care of business. Read that in your Bible. He'll be in the center of your life. Mm -hmm. He'll be in the center of the garden where you need to grow. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Whenever you plant a garden, you plant rows. Where do you plant them? In the center. Why do you plant them in the center? Well, I don't know. I've been taught quite a bit. But I think that's where they grow the best, right? That's what I've been taught. Well, I'm glad to know that God's in the center of my heart and life and I can grow. I'm glad to know, and I can read the book of Zephaniah again. I go over in verse chapter number three and verse number seventeen. He can show me that in the midst, He's my strength. In the midst of the storm, He's my strength. In the midst of my work, He's my strength. In the midst of my fires, in the midst of my tired times, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings. Oh, in the center, He'll be with you. On the outskirts, I. I'm telling you, we're having to reach for him. I don't want to be... They sing a song when he reached down his hand for me. Boy, it's a good song and I love it. But I'm glad in the middle of it all, Jesus looked down. He saw me in trouble. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm littering all over the place. He looked down in the middle of it all. He took my hand. He set my feet on a firm foundation. Uh You go studying about foundations. You go studying about how things are made. Where's all the strength at in a bowling ball? Where's all the strength at in a softball or a baseball? Where's all the strength at in a golf ball? Come on, you sports fanatics out there. Where's all the strength at? It's right in the center of that ball. I'm glad he can be in the center of my life and give me strength, comfort me, tell me I can be peacefully still and him say, son, it's all right. I've got this. I've tried to fix it a lot of times, ain't you, Brother Keith? Why? And every time I've tried to fix it, Brother Donnie, I've messed it up. Amen. Worse and worse. Whether I should have just said, Lord, if you just hold my hand, keep me in the center of your yeah. You be in the center of me. Keep me in the center of your will. When we go see somebody that may be troubled, downhearted, tore up, brokenhearted, mad, hey, mad, right. mad. Yeah. We can go to him in love, and we've got God in the center of our heart and life. You watch and see if he ain't got the door already open over our no Ridge mat that if God tells you and you got to him sin the center of your life, when you go to somebody, he's already preparing that heart saying, I don't know why you come to me, but I was thinking about the Lord this week. You watch and see you keep him in the center. He'll line somebody else's center up ready to receive what you got. In the midst. In the midst. In the middle. In the middle. In the midst. In the middle. There was salvation. In the middle. There was hope. In the middle. 
there was life. In the middle was a sacrifice for you and me. In the midst. He's right in the middle of it. I believe they laid him in that old barry tomb. They laid him right in the middle of it. I believe God the Father looked down and said, Son, I'm going to kick the door open. You get up and you run out of there, fly out of there. You hover out of there. I don't care what you do, but come out of there because I'm in the middle of that tomb. And you're in the middle of that tomb. Oh, wait just a minute. Boy, I love when God gives you something, don't you? God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Ghost. Who's he mentioned in the middle? Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! And it's set out like that in Trinity when you talk about in the book of the, or in the, the blessed book. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Who's right in the middle of them? Mm-mm. Boy, ain't that good. Boy, ain't you glad God's right in the center of your heart and life? I'm glad he was in the center that day. If he'd have been on the outskirts, we may, we may not have made it. We may not have made it. But he was in the center and he gave his life for you and me that we might have life and have it more abundantly right, right in the middle. Amen. Right in the center, right where the foundation of the house stands, right where the foundation of the world stands. He was in the center. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Ain't you glad of that? Amen. In the midst of all that he is going through. Talking about being, he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Father seen fit that him bear that cat of nine tails. That the old beard was plucked for me. Then he gets in the middle of all that mess where there's people throwing stuff at him, scorning him, gouging him in the ribs, piercing his side. Spitting on him. I wouldn't be surprised that some of them didn't go up and shake across and make it even heavier. And who was on his mind when he was on that cross? In the middle of the storm, who did he have on his mind? All the church. All of God's people that he knew had come to know him before it's too late. He knew down through the ages. He knew... When he was on the cross, buddy, Calvary Baptist Church in 2021 on 5-2, he knew you'd be sitting here tonight and need something right in the center of your life. Maybe tonight you need the Lord Jesus Christ to come back to the center. Right. Donnie, come get a song, Allison. Maybe tonight you need the Lord Jesus Christ to come back and be right in the center of your heart and life. Maybe you've drifted. And I'll tell you this right now, and you say, well, maybe the Lord's drifted. The Lord ain't drifted. I'll guarantee you that. He's not tossed about with every wind and doctrine. Don't you get a hold of that? The Lord Jesus Christ still stands. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He said, I am the chief cornerstone and I shall not be moved. Oh boy, I'm telling you, I like playing people like that, don't you? I like having a God to say, you can't move me, devil. You can come at me with everything you got, but you can't move me because I am the center. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the front. I am the back. I am the sides. I am all around, but most importantly, I'm in the center and you can't move me. God ain't moved. Maybe you've moved. I'd like for you to evaluate your life for just a minute. Maybe you've moved on God. Maybe you need to have God back in the center. Maybe you need to move back to the center to God. You know who you are tonight? I'm not going to ask who you are. God knows who this message is for. He encouraged my heart with it and I'm thankful for it. And He's blessed me all day with it. I'm just glad that He's in the center of my heart and life. And maybe somebody here tonight does not have Him in the center of their life. Maybe somebody needs an anchor point. Oh, waves and the water gets rocky. Oh, waves dash high over the boat. It's nice to know I've got an anchor. Anchor holds, buddy. Old Brother Ricky Taylor sings a song. Anchor holds in spite of the storm. I'm telling you, the anchor's going to hold. I'm glad he's in the center of our life. If you want him in the center of your life, you know what? He'll come right in and sit down and be right there never leave unless you decide to get up and walk out on him. Maybe you need to 
maybe you need to find the foundation again that's hard and wants to be right in the middle of your life. Maybe you need to take and let him back into the center, into the midst. He said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. You want to be strong in the Lord? Get God in the center. Right. Get the Man. Lord Jesus Christ in the center. You want to be mighty? You want to be strong? You want to sing powerfully? Brother, you want to preach like nobody else? You want to have that double portion? As old Elijah and Elijah said, when you want that, that put God right in the middle and He'll preach your guts out. Yeah. Good. It won't be like any other preaching. It won't be like any other preacher. I seen the other night, last Wednesday night, not this past Wednesday. Yeah, it was this past Wednesday night, wasn't it? Our preacher just about passed out preaching so hard on the blood. I believe I'm telling you what, he's so wrapped up in the Holy Spirit for 30 minutes. But I'm telling you, he preached to the roof. He preached to the ground. He preached outside the wall. I'm telling you, he is full of the Holy Ghost. I believe he was centered in what God wanted him to preach. You preachers, you deacons, you teachers, I'll never be able to teach like Forrest Stewart ever did. I'll never be able to teach like some of these teachers are. I'm not a big teacher. I, I can tell you that. I'm just as silly and dumb as they come, if you will. But I'll tell you what, whenever you come to me, we're going to go to the center of that word. We're going to get God right in the center of heart and life, and we'll pray for wisdom. And I'll bet you, when we pray for wisdom, God will take and pour it out on us. God will pour wisdom out on you. You want to know more about the word? Just ask him. Put him right there in the center. He'll get it. You got him out here on the third or fourth chair, maybe in the third or fourth car, maybe on the back burner. Don't expect much from him. He said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He said, I am what? A jealous God. He wants to be right in the middle. He wants to be right in the middle, Lydia. It doesn't matter. That old stinky boy over there, he doesn't matter. I'm telling you, God wants to be right in the middle of your life. You can say that, I've made a mistake once. I'll not make it again. You don't keep God in the center. You don't keep God in the center. You watch destruction come. Yep. You don't keep God in the center, young people. You watch destruction come. Amen. Amen. Young people, you don't keep God in the center. You watch destruction come in your life. It may not be in the form of a, a relationship, but other than your mom and dad, it may not be nothing. Destruction will come if He's not in the center. Shame on me. Shame on me. Keep him right in the center of your heart and life. And I'm telling you, he'll take care of you. He'll pull you right up in the cliff of the rock. He'll take care of them sparrows. He'll pull you right up in the cliff of the rock in his heart. And he'll cup you and keep you safe from the storms and the wind and the rain and all, this, all the beating and battering. It don't make no difference. I'm telling you, it can blow as hard as it wants to. Hide me in the cleft of the rock, Father. I want to be right in the center of that rock where you can put your hand over me and keep me. As we stand all over God's house, this altar's open. They're going to sing a verse invitation.